Hi everyone. Welcome to Reading, Writing, and the Common Core, Fall Semester 2013. I'm Dave Boardman. I'm the instructor for this course, and I'm really glad to have you online and to be a part of this. Um, if, for those of us in education, the uh, Common Core for State Standards has been an interesting journey. You know, it's one that started off, I think, with uh, great um, excitement almost and sort of uh, the idea of ushering in a new era in education. Um, along the way, mixed in with a whole lot of politics, um, a lot of questions about professional development, um, even questions about whether or not these standards would be implemented. And if you've been following the news at all the past summer, uh, kind of a renewed controversy about whether the Common Core has a future, whether the unity of all these states that have signed on is now falling apart. So it is a huge, big jumble. Um, for some, a mess. For others, a exciting uh, possibility. <laughs> so we'll figure that out this fall. Uh, we come to this course, I, I know, from very um, diverse perspectives. Some of you folks may have already been implementing Common Core standards in your classrooms, some by choice, others not by choice. Um, others are wrestling with how to go about uh, implementing these standards. I come to this course uh, from sort of you know, maybe a slightly different perspective. Um, I spent roughly uh, three years working on plans to implement the core in uh, RSU 18, which was a district that signed on to the mass customized learning model, a proficiency-based education uh, program, um, which for many people seems to hold great promise. Um, I left RSU 18 uh, as things, you know, the curriculum was coming together. And I now teach at uh, Midmain Technical Center, which is a career and technical education center based in Waterville. We have students who come from four sending high schools. And I teach a program in communication technology, um, video production, uh, writing through media, marketing. It's really work that's my, my real love. And so um, I left uh, work as an English language arts teacher. However, I retained my certification, which was a good thing because now um, I'm in the process of figuring out how Common Core ELA standards work in my career and technical education program. So while you folks are wrestling with some of these issues yourselves, I'll be doing the same as I look at revamping a syllabus, um, rewriting curriculum to reflect um, or provide opportunities for students uh, to meet Common Core standards. So for all of our perspectives, it'll be interesting. I have uh, sent you folks the syllabus, and um, it's attached, um, it's linked in the course in the opening section. Oh, you can tell I'm working in a school with the bell. Um, so it's uh, so the syllabus is there along with our schedule. There may be some changes and if there are I will be certain to make sure you know about them ahead of time. Um, the projects we'll be working on are laid out in really basic detail. It's not enough detail for you to get going but th that detail will be coming. There's a required book, um, and I think that uh, you'll enjoy it. I know I read it and, and was just right away struck by how uh, Jim Knight, the author, connects theory. He connects a lot of the writers, I think, who've connected for many teachers um, and research along with practice. Uh, there are a number of links throughout the book to videos that sort of highlight or illustrate some of the concepts. And I think it works very well. It is not a book about the Common Core standards per se. Um, and if you are looking for a more specific book about the standards, I will tell you that, you know, I think if you look at the academic publishing world right now, there are just steady books about how to implement the standards and lesson plans for standards-based things. 
And while you may find you might find something helpful in there, um, I think that there's a whole lot of knowledge within this group in this course. And so rather than give you sort of a cookie cutter model, I think that it makes more sense for us to talk about standards, instruction, and how they come together. And in so doing, use our own experience along with other readings and what we draw into things from our previous experience. I think that works better than a book about the Common Core. I have, uh, do recommend um, a Marzano book, um, which uh, the title's escaping me, but it's listed in the, um, in the syllabus, um, uh, which re reflects directly the Common Core. Um, I had been involved in developing some scoring guides. Many of those are um, really models um, in the Marzano text. I think he based a lot of the work for that book on work from main teachers. I think it's helpful, but I think if you can borrow a copy or glance at one, I would honestly save the 30 bucks and not buy that book. Um, if you do buy it, you know, I think it'll be helpful, it'll be useful. I use my copy and I will be using my copy. Um, but I have, you know, a few reservations about it. Um, it, it's definitely not, should not be like the sole book that you look at. Uh, Jim Burke, who is a English language arts teacher from California, has a two-set series coming out um, using the Common Core Standards, sort of a what they mean, how to use them book. And that's supposed to be out very quickly. I've ordered the 9 through 12 copy, and I'm glad to let you know how that is. That might be a choice book that you pick. So anyway, the Marzano book is recommended. Um, great if you can borrow or glance at a copy. Um, if you buy it, I, I think it will be useful. Um, but the night book is definitely required. You'll notice in the first week that we start out, and I'm just going to pull up my week so I can um, sort of glance at this and chat. The first week's a bit of an introduction. And you'll see in the opening work, links to the standards, and a download if that's helpful. The bulk of our week is spent looking at the standards. Um, ideally, what I'd like you to do is find one path, and it could be narrative writing, it could be argument, it could be reading, and just follow that K through 12 and see what that, that one standard looks like in each and every one of those grade zones, and, and they are grouped. They're not exactly grade you know, four or five, but they are grouped. See what that looks like, and especially as educators, bring your own perspective in. See if that layout of a standard is different than what you already do. I think many of us would find that the, there's not a lot of new material here in the Common Core. If you've been teaching in Maine and using the Maine learning results, you know, there's not too much that is absolutely earth-shaking here. Uh, the layout is very different, and I think that we will talk a great deal about philosophy and the idea behind them being different, particularly about proficiency. So um, I have provided, uh, there's a few links for things to sort of get us thinking about things. You'll notice there's an RSA animate on changing education paradigms to watch. There are a couple links um, Starving the Future. This is a column in the New York Times by Charles Blow. He's written a fair amount about the Common Core. Very supportive. As well as an opposing view, Fallacy of the Common Core, by education historian Diane Ravitch. Um, she is uh, she's very interesting. You know, you would think, I think just on the surface, that um, standards, rigor, an educator would sort of go along with this, but she makes some very interesting arguments. And she writes repeatedly in other posts about Charles Blow and sort of the sources he's using. It's not quite as easy as, oh, we don't want to be beat by the Chinese or our kids will lose all their jobs to children in India if we don't do this, which is often the, you know, the rationale for the common core. Diane Ravitch poses some good things to think about. So it's a link to the Huffington Post. It's well worth the read. Uh, I've provided a link to a video on really 
a walkthrough of what the core looks like um, and some basics about the standards. In this first week, I'll ask you to really bring, you know, we're really going to set the week um, with our own background. So you're coming into this with what you see and what you know. And this is a first um, initial forum. Uh, to participate in forums, it'd be very helpful for you to consider it like a conversation in a graduate seminar, which this is. Um, rather than taking place over a two-hour span at an evening in Scheibel's Hall, this is taking place over the course of a week. So you may pop in, post a comment, come back a day later, see what's been said about your comment, add on to someone else's. But if we could make this a real dynamic conversation that just evolves, that'd be very helpful. Um, I also ask you to post to your blog in Moodle. You have a blog, and it only works if you <laughs> follow the video tutorial blogging in Moodle. What we need is uh, for you to add an entry about this course. That way, we can gather all these blog entries and read them. I think that it is tremendously helpful for all of us to be able to get a sense of what other teachers in the room are saying about the Common Core. So whether you are coming to this course as a classroom elementary teacher or a high school teacher, a literacy coach, or an administrator, you have a perspective on what you, A, already see in classrooms, and B, what the Common Core tells us that we should be seeing in classrooms. And I think that before we can talk about how we implement standards or best practices or anything like that, it's tremendously helpful to talk about what we already know and what our reaction is to these ideas based on that perspective of where we're coming from. So that's what this week's about. Uh, I think we'll find um, just big, uh, big ways of figuring out what, um, what education looks like today, what we may see as wrong with it, and what we would like to see. And hopefully, throughout the course, we can shape those ideas into really a meaningful plan of action. So this blog post is um, maybe a bit of a development of a plan of action, but it's sort of a where we are now and where we're going. I try to keep these conversations uh, rather short, and at 12, going on 13 minutes, this is a long one, but it's sort of the welcome to the class. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Uh, post to the Have a Question forum. I check that several times a day. If by a chance I've missed you, uh, don't be lost. Just give me a phone call. Likewise, should you have any problems with the course, um, problems logging on, or links aren't appearing um, where we expect them, please don't, uh, not, not don't forget, uh, please don't be afraid to uh, drop me a phone call. Uh, you can send me a text on my cell. Either way works, and I'll get right back to you. So I am really looking forward to this fall. Um, I think we will all sort of be in it together in a way and uh, going through some pretty interesting experiences and a whole lot of great conversations and reading. I'll put up a little more information about the uh, required text um, that we'll be reading and really what we'll be doing with it. Um, we'll have a bit of a reading schedule and we'll try to fill in the details as we get going. So if you are um, having questions, please post them. Um, I will have a little more info up on some things this week. All right, so we'll see you in the course. Thanks.